drugs can be many, but we are putting here or we will be discussing some of the drawbacks which are important. Say so size of silk particles generally do not remain same from upstream to downstream due to attrition of the particle. Here we are talking about a silt grade say D50 or say silt size. Now that silt size even in fact if D50 is remaining same but the distribution of silt in a mass of silt if we collect the distribution of silt size means the gradation of silt that may not remain same because when the silt is flowing from upstream to downstream the silt there is attrition there is abrasion of the silt particle uh, the each silt are getting uh, say uh, in touch and then there will be abrasion attrition and that way the size will be reducing gradually I mean, if we see in a large dimension, say in a river, uh, uh, that will be making our point more clear. In the large dimension, if we see in a river, say at upstream when we are in hill portion, uh, the silt, I mean this, uh, then the, uh, we do not call it as a silt, but the bed materials are say boulder, large size boulder. And then when these are rolling down because of attrition, abrasion, these are disintegrated. And then when we are coming to the plain size, then even in upstream, our sediment size will be a little larger. Then as we are coming further downstream, our sediment size is getting reduced. And finally, it will be coming to when it is going near the sea in a river, it will be very fine seal. So like that, the this is uh, sediment size gradually reduces. Now when our in a canal system, if the canal is of quite longer dimension, then silt what is entering and what is going out, there will be definitely different not only silt entering and going out, the bed material that is forming at the upstream and at the downstream, this will gradually it will change. But we are considering for the design purpose, we are considering one silt grade. And still, we are not uh, taking that silt grade very precisely. We are taking the, just the D50 size for having the uh, F value. So this is one of the drawbacks. And then another is that effect of say so evaporation and seepage are not considered. That can sometimes become significant in some of the canal system. Uh, that we are considering this is the discharge, but in some canal system when it is wide enough, the evaporation is quite significant. And then suppose you are carrying some sediment, evaporation loss is there, so sediment concentration will increase. Similarly, another loss that if the formation is quite permeable, then there may be huge seepage loss. That is by seepage from the canal, the water may percolate into the ground. And then also the charge is reducing. And then when the charge is reducing, this water was carrying some sediment. So when the charge is reducing, sediment is not reducing. So sediment will be getting deposited at some point somewhere. And so, so or rather we can say that sediment concentration is increasing. So those aspects we are not considering at all in the design purpose. And then these theories do not precisely consider silt grade and silt charge. Well, uh, silt grade, as I have already explained, by silt grade, what we mean the gradation of silt, we should know, say, well graded silt uh, means that is in that silt uh, there are, say, silt size well distributed, means. Starting from smaller to bigger dimension, it is there. And if it is poorly graded or uniformly graded, means all seeds are of course almost of, uh, say, similar dimension. This is for the strength purpose. Good. So, uh, in fact, uh, this seal grade, we are not considering precisely. Rather, we are putting only one value, that is the D50, to represent the silt size and our silt grade. And that's why that we are not considering it in a very precise way. Then silt charge, uh, that is not considered in this equation. Say we are talking about bit charge and we are considering one point that silt charge that is coming into the channel and the silt which is forming the bit is of the same size, fine. But how much silt is coming? That is basically we are talking as silt charge. So what is the silt concentration? 
or a silt load in the channel that is not at all considered in the entire design procedure well of course some uh, later on some design procedure has been suggested where the silt charge is considered directly explicitly considered well so this is one drawback of these two methods then more importantly these equations are empirical as you know that kennedy derived this equation based on his observation of some stable ridge in upper buried of canal region where it say it has a particular cell size and then climate condition and all those things are there it is for upper buried of canal region but for a different reason that formula may not be applicable because cell size may be different and other factors may be different well so these equations are empirical means based on the observed data and therefore the result, the values of coefficients and exponents well if we remember that there are in all equation there are some coefficients there are some exponents so values of these coefficients and exponents are definitely not universal so in true sense these in true sense depend on the local condition depends on the local condition it is very important say if i write the uh, kennedy's equation say v is equal to 0.55 okay i can put m also here that which take care of the silt well then d to the power 0.64 well in this equation uh, when originally it was suggested of course this is again in our meter unit and mks system but originally it was suggested in fps system and then uh, there were also some rounding of these values well now in uh, presently used equation is this one but here uh, say to take care of the silt part that is uh, to take care of the influence of different location this m was introduced where m is nothing but say v by p0 where v is the velocity uh, that is the critical velocity non silting non scoring velocity of the uh, region and then v0 is the critical velocity or non silting non scoring velocity of upper buried of canal region now if sill size of that particular location is larger then value of m is greater than 1 if sill size are smaller then the upper buried of canal region then m value will be less than one well that is taking care of the sill factor but this is not enough people observe that uh, with change in sill size and with change in location this exponent is also changing this exponent is also changing in fact in india say for godavari region for different uh, river valley experiments were conducted and it was found that uh, the for critical velocity for stable section for stable channel like kennedy's formula of course the format is same that is some coefficient then time then its depth n to the power say n v is equal to so this is the general form and this format remaining same but for different region of india this coefficient c and this n were determined and it was found that this value varies so this is of course important that's why now we can say that kennedy's formula is basically v is equal to say c one coefficient we are using then d to the power n this is the general form say now in this general form this n and c if we determine ourselves by observing some stable reach of our region that is of a particular region and that equation will be more reliable for that particular region rather than using uh, this kennedy's equation directly and of course the basis of this form is obtained from kennedy's formula similarly in less equation also we have uh, several coefficient and several exponent so we should take care of those value and these are empirical and uh, in fact they hardly have a very strong analytical basis of course um, that the v was related to d that has some analytical basis when he observed that he found that okay uh, this erosion is occurring because of the vertical indies 
which is more prominent along the depth only, width is not that important. So that way he tried to relate these things. But still, uh, these later on he himself uh, realized that no, B by D ratio should be given. B has influence on that. Well, that way, uh, these equations has that sort of limitation. Analytical basis is not there. And that's why later on that people tried to develop one method. And nowadays, this method is used for design of uh, alluvial channel. In fact, uh, India, Indian court also suggest this method. That is the tractive force method of design of alluvial channel. So after covering this Kennedy's and Lessig's theory uh, of design of alluvial channel, now we'll be moving on to design of alluvial channel using tractive force method. Well, now we need to know uh, what is basically tractive force. Well, so tractive force is the force exerted by the flowing liquid on the perimeter. Perimeter means basically uh, why it is being written as perimeter or why I am writing it as perimeter. This uh, say we shouldn't say that it is the exerted by the uh, fluid on the sediment or soil because sometimes the perimeter may be consisting of something else. But still, the flowing fluid will be exerting a force, drag force on the side of the channel. And if sediment is there, if soil is there, if it is an unlined canal, we are talking about, of course, alluvial channel, then in alluvial channel, the drag force will be exerted on the soil particle, soil particle, of course. So that is called as tractive force. Now, what that force, that means when a fluid is flowing through a channel, then what is the drag force or where from it is coming? That is basically the force that is governing the flow or the force due to which the fluid is moving. And that is nothing but the component of gravity force acting in the direction of so we can say that in uniform theory, it is equal to the component of gravity force in the direction of flow. So that is what the tractive force. But for the design purpose or for, uh, for developing the concept of design of alluvial channel by tractive force, we need to know about another term that is called unit, unit tractive force. Or so that unit tractive force is also called shear force or drag force. So unit tractive force means tractive force per unit area. When we talk about force per unit area, we use the term pressure normally or say stress. And that's why, uh, but in case of tractive force, we are using the term popularly it is being used and we are using the term that is the unit tractive force. And uh, of course, we can call that's why this is a shear force or say we can call it as a drag force also. Now, if we recall our earlier discussion itself in uniform flow, then we have this uh, sort of analysis. Say, in a channel, this is the bed, and then water is flowing like that, and let us consider, say, this portion. And, uh, well, let me draw See, this is the section. This is the section. And then sectional area is this area. And of course, we could take the, we are considering uniform flow. So wherever we are taking the section, it doesn't matter. But if the channel is non-prismatic, it is better to take the section from the central part so that it represents both sides in a well-represented way. Now, say so this is area and this is the perimeter. Perimeter is the entire side length. This is the perimeter. And the so weight of this is W. Weight of this uh, fluid is W. <clears throat> okay. Uh, well, um, W means uh, this W, if I represent this W to write the total weight, and say unit weight of the fluid, if I write as say small w, unit weights, 
Sometimes we were using the term gamma also, gamma w to represent unit weight. Well, in different book, this different symbols are used. We should not get confused uh, by these symbols. We should know the very physical meaning of this one. So it is the unit weight of water if we write. Then unit weight multiplied by the volume of this fluid. We are talking about the fluid volume between section 1 and 2. So what is this volume of the fluid? If the area is A and if we take length of this portion L, say L, length of this portion as L, then what will be the volume of this one? It is A multiplied by length. A multiplied by length. This is what the weight. And now what is the force that is acting in the direction of flow? Well, now if I draw a perpendicular line, then this angle is theta. This angle is theta, perpendicular to the plane because the slope is theta. If I give this angle here, this is also theta. Well, so if this is theta and if it is W A into L, then this force will be, that is which is basically, because the flow movement is in this direction. So this force will be equal to, uh, this force will be equal to W A L into sine theta, W A L sine theta. Well, now. For very small value of theta, generally this canal system in agricultural field when we design, then these are normally not having very steep slope when we talk about plane area. And then, then this theta, because of course this slope always remains generally small because we are talking about this part we are doing for design of alluvial channel. And in that case in alluvial channel, it will be normally in the river valley and that way the slope will not be very high. But of course, if we go for, if we talk about agriculture in hill somewhere there, and in that case, uh, this soil will not be alluvial, and as such, we are not talking about design of this sort of canal. Well, <clears throat> that, that design concept will be different because the soil will not be alluvial channel at that point. Well, so for small value of theta, what we can have W A L sine theta, this for small value of theta, we can write for a small value of theta, we can have sine theta is approximately equal to theta. And what this theta is? Theta is nothing but the bit slope s, bit slope s. So what we can have if this force is written as f, if this force is written as f, so what we can have that f is equal to, f is equal to W A L and S W A L and S. Well, now uh, this is what the attractive force as per definition. The force exerted by the flowing fluid. This is the force which is driving. So this force is uh, taking the water. So this is the force exerted by the flowing fluid. But now what is unit attractive force? The force exerted per unit area. So what the total area, total area means here we are concerned about because drag force we are talking about exerted on the perimeter of the channel. So perimeter means if we talk about the surface that over which it is being applied, so the total length will be, total surface area will be this perimeter into the length. If I talk about the channel, it is basically going like that. So this perimeter into the length, this length is same as that what I am drawing. So this is the total surface area. So tractive force, tractive force, say per unit area, per unit area, which is nothing but the unit tractive force that we are talking about. This will be equal to, say, W A L S divided by what is the surface area that will be P into L, P into L, this is the surface area, perimeter, length and then L, if you open it, this is the surface area, okay, P into L. So that we generally write as tau, active stress tau or that tau is equal to, we can write, so A by P, 
that can be written as R L and L would get cancelled. So this is equal to W R and S, where W is the unit weight of water, where W is unit weight of water. What is R? We know hydraulic radius. So I'm not writing it here. And then S is bed slope. S is bed slope. <clears throat> and R is hydraulic radius. Okay. Hydraulic radius. So we are getting that tau is equal to W R S is our relation. And now for a very wide channel, if our channel is quite wide or canal is quite wide, then as we know for wide rectangular channel, this R can be represented with list error as depth y. Well, so that we did discuss earlier. So this for wide rectangular channel, for wide rectangular channel, for wide rectangular channel, tau can be written as w y into s. So this is a very important relation and will be used for, uh, it is a basic equation rather for design of channel by tractive force method. Well, now let us proceed with this idea that tau is equal to w y s. This is the shear stress. Of course, it will not be exactly equal to w y s. And what that shear stress, that is also important. Now we are having the shear force and then we are dividing it by the entire area as if the value what we are getting is say equal in all the surface area. That is we are considering that it is the average shear stress. So because shear stress actually may be different. Suppose when the water is flowing, this water is flowing through the entire section and it is well understood that shear stress exerted at this point and maybe at this point, at this point will not be equal. That will be definitely different. But this value we are getting by dividing the total shear force by the entire surface length. 